Hi everyone. So this is an A paper. I told you guys I would submit an A paper onto Canvas and I thought I'll just do a quick video. Um, it's a little confusing to read with all the side notes so I thought I'd just go over it really quickly <clears throat> for you all. So let's make sure we know the last name, your last name, and the page number should be in the upper right hand corner for MLA format. And then here's the proper header for an MLA paper. You notice it's all double spaced. There's no triple spacing anywhere. There's just double spacing throughout the entire paper. So the student has a catchy title that I like. I'm not going to grade you guys on your title for this paper, but if you can come up with a catchy title, that would be great. And so as far as the hook goes, it's not the greatest. It's not a really strong hook. He could have done a much better job with the hook, but it, it's fine. Um, let's see, what do I have here? So he starts out generally talking about safety of children and then he narrows it down a little bit more to vaccinations. So he's still staying non-biased. He's not automatically telling us his opinion on it, but he is generally bringing up the topic, which is nice. And here he gets a little bit more specific about vaccines. Um, he's not giving his thesis statement yet. And he, one thing that he does here is he actually gives a counter argument which, you know, it's, it's not going to be too bad. It's definitely not necessary in the introduction. Okay, so here is where his thesis statement starts. So he gets really narrow here and tells us exactly what he's trying to persuade his audience of. So the opinion is that immunizations should be mandatory in the United States. So that's his clear opinion. I like that he gives it straight out. And then he just gives the reason straight out. He gives me three specific reasons so I know exactly what his paper will be about. He's going to be talking about how the immunizations are safe, they preserve herd immunity, and they are already mandatory around um, other countries that are doing well. So really good thesis statement, clear, concise, does a good job with that. Okay, so this first paragraph, if we're going to go according to the order of the thesis statement, which you should, is going to be about um, vaccines being safe. This definitely, it's not a strong topic sentence, although you see the word there, unsafe, um, you know, gives me a clue that that's what this paragraph is going to be about. What else do I have written here? So I have, this isn't a strong topic sentence. It does give me a clue. And yeah, this is definitely the student's weakest paragraph. So he doesn't develop and support the idea of vac vaccines being safe at all. Um, he really gives no evidence. Um, in fact, there's a little bit more talking about autism. It's almost like a counter argument paragraph, but um, yeah, so this this paragraph definitely should uh, be improved upon. I think I told him that in his rough draft and he didn't do a great job with the final draft either. but it does the paper does get better. so just hang on. All right, so here we have the phrase of herd immunity. Um, so I have, while the term herd immunity in this topic sentence lets me know what the paragraph will be about, he could have used a transition, uh, either a word or phrase, to switch main ideas. So remember the previous paragraph was talking about uh, safety of vaccines, and now he's switching to herd immunity. He could have had a transition here. Let's see what else I've got here. So he is anticipating the audience's needs. By explaining what herd immunity is, he's thinking that, oh, the reader might not know what herd immunity means. So it does a good job in actually telling what it means. And I knew what it meant, but it's okay. It is, it is a more scientific term, so it's okay with him. I don't want you to define a term that is really basic, that you know I'm gonna know what it means. Um, like if you would have, if he would have defined the term vaccine, you know, that would have been a little bit, well, I can't think of the word that I'm thinking of, but you know, it might've offended, might offend your audience if you give a definition, definition for a really common word. Okay. And here he has his evidence. I like that he used the word scientist. It's giving credibility or ethos to his paper. And he gives, you actually could use ATAL here, but I'm, I'll get into that in another paper. Gives the scientist's name. He is doing the I in ICE. Here, this whole thing that's circled. So remember the circled part 
um, is the I in ICE. Introduce, cite, explain is what ICE stands for. So the first time that you use a source, you need to use TAG. I know there's a lot of acronyms here. Title, author, genre. I, I talked about this in the Integrating Sources video lecture. So he gives the title of the article, right, which is Vaccine Hurt Effect. He gives the author's names, and he tells the genre, which here it just means what kind of source you used. He said review article. You could have said scholarly art, journal article, and that would be fine. Okay, and so here, let's scoot up here. Here he's giving the C in ICE, right? Just the citation. He's giving an actual quote here. A paraphrase or a summary would also be considered the C in ICE. And then he does a good job of following up. He does that E in ICE. He explains what the quote means. Remember, explain, E in explain is explain the meaning or the significance of the source that you give, the evidence. And then he goes one step further with this uh, turquoise area that I've highlighted. He makes the connection to his argument. So he fully quotes the source, he explains what the quote means, and then he connects it back to his argument. Doesn't just expect his audience to be able to make that connection. Okay, so here, let's see, he not only has a topic sentence that lets me know what the paragraph's about, but he's got a transition, right? So he's transitioning smoothly from the paragraph of herd immunity to his next paragraph, which is being about other countries that are have mandatory vaccinations. He's got the I and I's. He introduces his source because it's the first time he's using this source and then he actually gives the quote and he follows up by explaining the quote for the audience so it does a good job with the ice here in this paragraph and now we're getting to our counter counter argument paragraph despite constant research that despite is a big word that's going to let me know that he's probably going to change um, heads on me. So despite constant research, um, there are people who think the potential side effects the vaccine could have on children outweigh the benefit of immunization. So it's clearly a counter argument. So I know that this is going to be his counter argument paragraph. He uses a source and evidence for his counter argument. You have to have a, a source for your counter argument. And then this although, although is another word that was in that short uh, counter argument video, I believe. It's a, it's a term that lets me know that you're kind of going to pivot again and go another direction. So he has, although the risk of vaccines causing allergic reactions is a valid fear, the benefit of immunity cannot be overlooked. So he does a good job of bringing up and although he objects to the counter argument, he does give it validity. He doesn't call it stupid or idiotic or anything. But this is clearly where his rebuttal starts. And then he gives evidence for his rebuttal. And then he kind of wraps up his counter argument nicely. He acknowledges, again, the counter argument, but still maintains his stance that vaccines um, should be done. Okay, so here's a nice conclusion. I have here that he makes sure the audience knows the importance or relevance of the topic of vaccines. So you need to be sure and give that so what or who cares in your paper. And it's a really good idea to remind your audience in the conclusion of that so what, who cares. Why is your topic relevant? Here he reiterates his thesis statement. You notice if you we looked back at the thesis statement, it pretty much says the same thing, but he does it a little bit differently. He, he rewords it a little bit, which is nice. I don't feel like he just copied and pasted his thesis statement back down in the conclusion. And then I have here that he ends his paper with a warning or a prediction, and that's a good way to end your conclusion. So some good ways to end are to give a warning, a suggestion, a prediction, or you can ask a thoughtful rhetorical question, kind of like some people do in their hook. If you can tie the conclusion back to the hook in the intro, that is a good way to close. It's a little bit more sophisticated way. It's not required. Um, some students do it, and some students do it well. So, you know, you're welcome to try it. That's it. I will put this up on Canvas. And if you have any questions about it, please feel free to email me or text me. Otherwise, 
um, this was an A paper. It wasn't perfect by any means, but it was strong enough that it got an A grade. So thanks everyone for watching. See you later.